So in this session, we're going to be looking at uh, Power BI specifically. Uh, feel free to interrupt me with questions. I try to keep it under control uh, and try to make sure I get, you, uh, get your questions answered. Okay. I will repeat. If I don't see your hand going up, it's because I'm almost blind by the spots here, but uh, we'll, we'll be able to manage. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> Power BI, how many of you are already using it? Okay, what are you doing in the session? I'm going to start from zero. Okay, so first of all, uh, I'm quickly going to go through a, through a set of slides and then I'm going to go into demo. Okay, so we'll have a look at uh, uh, how we're going to be building reports and dashboards and so on. Uh, things you have to know about Power BI, uh, some of the capabilities, some of the ideas that I want to pitch to you as well. And then also look at uh, some of the best practices. Okay, so provide you some guidance on that. So uh, basically, uh, when I say how many of you are using Power BI, there's actually uh, some interesting flavors. I mean, Power BI desktop tool is free for download. Anyone could use it, and you could start building reports out of it. Okay. Now, if you want to do things like <coughs> sharing and collaboration, and you want to do things like uh, consume the dashboards of the report online, you actually need to subscribe to the Power BI service. And there's a couple of ways to do that. You could do that using uh, Office 365, and it comes as an add-on to uh, Office 365 V3, or it comes with E5. You can also get Power BI as a standalone license. Uh, but basically, the consumption, the sharing and collaboration is based by using the Power BI uh, service. So it's a SaaS service, uh, very easy to sign up. You go to powerbi.com, you sign up, and you're ready to start with Power BI, be able to publish dashboards. Uh, and we're going to look into the details on how we're going to build dashboards, how we're going to make those dashboards a little bit prettier, easy to use, and so on. So we have a couple of scenarios that we're going to be looking at. Okay, uh, there's a great ecosystem. There's there's partners, there's ISVs. Uh, there's actually a great opportunity for you to start embedding some of those Power BI reports uh, into websites and blogs and so on. So you have some capabilities on that. Uh, it's integrated across Microsoft products. So what you actually see is some of our devices and some of our uh, applications do have Power BI embedded. Now, what we're not going to do in this session is we're not going to make things look amazingly pretty and uh, focus on desktop backgrounds and formatting and all that stuff. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's uh, something uh, that doesn't take quite a lot of learning or quite a lot of action. Uh, so that's uh, uh, we're not going to spend too much time on that one specifically. <clears throat> now, the interesting thing is. Uh, I can actually go to the Power BI service, log on to it, and start building reports and dashboards right out of the portal. Okay, so uh, the great thing about this is I can actually author Power BI reports and dashboards without needing to install any tool, without needing to install a Power BI desktop client. Okay, so uh, it has some limitations, but primarily you could. Uh, use content packs, you could use services, you could use data files, Power BI desktop files could be uploaded all through the service, okay? Because the Power BI desktop file actually is just a file that is consumed by the Power BI service, okay? It's a PBIX file and it gets consumed in the service, so we're gonna go uh, through that. Now, the great capability of the service is actually uh, that you can share and collaborate, but it could also enable it for a feature that is called natural language query. Uh, which allows you to actually ask questions about the data that sits underneath uh, the report in the dashboard, uh, and then give you that uh, give you that result set back. Okay. So uh, one of the other things is uh, we're also going to talk about Power BI embedded, which means you have an application, you want to bring data to life inside your application using Power BI embedded. Uh, you can actually use that. I know some of you might have been developing applications in which they use reporting services with a report view with API. Uh, you can actually use Power BI embedded uh, and actually embed that within applications. So basically what you do at that point is you're spinning up your own service uh, as a Power BI embedded service and you're going to be consuming your reports through that Power BI service that you do spin up. Okay. Uh, so creating reports authoring, publishing them, uh, keeping data live using direct query. Uh, that's what we're going to look at. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to be building things out at first uh, using the Power BI desktop. 
Uh, now, the interesting about Power BI Desktop is that uh, Power BI Desktop is on a monthly release update. So every month you get a new update, which means you get new features, you get new capabilities uh, that come with the tool. And then uh, the Power BI service itself, uh, we update not as frequent, but when we update, we can update that instantly fast. So let's say we have some new, really cool things that require changes to the Power BI service. We update that service for you. There's nothing you need to do uh, to actually support that. Okay, uh, so talked about the report, okay. Uh, one of the great things is actually the existing visualizations that sit in Power BI, we open source those. So basically you could take a data visualization, use that, modify it to your own lightings and to your own desires. And one of the other things that is great to do is what you see on the right hand here, this is actually a custom map, okay. So anything that you could potentially think of, you could build your own data visualization and then just tie it to the data point and start visualizing. So we'll have a look at some of the, uh, some of the examples on how we're gonna be uh, building that as well. <clears throat> now, how do I keep uh, data fresh and active? There's a couple of ways to do that. And one of the methods that uh, you're gonna be using there is what we call direct query. Now the direct query capabilities, what you need to understand from that is you're actually connecting to a live data source, so whenever you request the data, you always have the latest, okay? What I can do as well is I can actually specify on each of the data sources that I have, I have the ability uh, to say, hey, I'm gonna put this refresh on the schedule. Uh, that's important for you to understand. I mean, if, if, if you're running, as I said it in the previous session, if you're running a uh, enterprise data warehouse and you're only refreshing that data warehouse every 24 hours and new data comes in, why in the world would you use a direct query to that data source if it only refreshes every 24 hours, okay? You would have to schedule it. So the user gets the reports, gets the dashboard rendered without actually having to go to the actual data, okay? So keep that in mind. Uh, two of the most popular direct data sources are SQL Data Warehouse and Azure SQL Database. Uh, so you can use that within the Power BI report, directly connect to the source so you're actually not moving the data. Uh, one of the things that we're gonna talk about as well as the on-premises data gateway, so you can actually set up your own gateway to then connect to on-premises data sources. Since SQL Database and SQL Data Warehouse are running on Azure, that's actually very easy to set up. Uh, also think about that from a reporting delivery perspective. If you have a desire and a need to bring reports to people that use them mobile, why would you create the additional overhead having to go through a gateway to your on-premises data source? Okay, you might as well just say, hold on a second, my on-premises data source, I'm actually gonna be putting or replicating some of that data into SQL Data Warehouse or SQL Database and use them as direct query away from there because that allows me to scale. Uh, one of the great things is as you look into SQL Database, uh, is SQL Database actually allows for uh, geo-replication, which means that if you use geo-replication with SQL Database and bring that database to multiple regions, uh, you can actually take advantage of that, uh, of that service and actually bring the data much closer uh, to the user. That's a really good question. Can I use direct query on a SQL server on a VM? The answer is you could pretty much use direct query on the majority of the data sources. The interesting thing is SQL server in a VM is considered to be an on-premises data source, even though it runs, you run it on a VM on Azure, so you have to set up the data gateway to actually accomplish that. So really good question, okay? <clears throat> So uh, the key benefit and the key differentiator between uh, Power BI and some of the other competitors is uh, you can have pre-built dashboards and reports for popular SaaS solutions. So that actually is uh, a couple of things that if you follow the Power BI blog and update, uh, there's really a great set of updates that we bring out with more connectivity, more solutions uh, that actually allows you to adopt to a template or adopt to a content pack that has been released and just point that to your own data sources, okay? Um, quite honestly, from a live real-time dashboard perspective, uh, I've been working with a variety of uh, data visualization tools. I don't think there's anything better that does live and real-time dashboarding 
uh, any better than uh, Power BI does it, okay? And I'll show you what I mean by that uh, as we go through the actual, uh, actual demos. So, uh, <clears throat> talked about the uh, data connection and go to the data connections itself, as well as on-premises as cloud, their secure connections. Uh, one of the things that I do with uh, natural language query is, is, is like being able to just find out the data itself. If we look on building a dashboard, there's also a capability that's called Quick Insights. And actually I've been using that actively to get some more insights into the data itself without things that you would typically not look for yourself, okay? <clears throat> now, how do we tie things together and uh, what about connectivity and integration with R? Uh, R is born in New Zealand, right? Uh, thank you for that. Um, it's just a great capability to do uh, advanced analytics using R because what I can actually do is I can use an R connector and use an R query within Power BI and just run R scripting and get data coming back to Power BI coming out of R. So extremely powerful on that part. What else I can do is every R visual that is out there, you can actually grab that visual, okay, and use that visual in Power BI. Now, uh, <clears throat> this morning I had a uh, customer meeting where we were talking about uh, some of the challenges that, that, that they have with their BI tools overall, okay? Oh, we're trying to visualize uh, 2.5 million data points, okay, in a single visualization. Let me be clear and honest to you. Any data tool out there that wants to have 2.5 million data points in a single visualization is probably not necessarily the best design. Okay, and any tool is gonna struggle with that. Why? Because you're basically generating and plotting 2.5 million data points. You're gonna be so much better and faster doing that in R and then pull the R visual into Power BI, okay? The key advantage is yes, it will, it will, it will process the moment you run it, uh, but it will be so much faster to actually plot those points. Uh, so you might be wanna using a different visualization. Uh, one of the things as well, if, if you're plotting out data visualizations to actually see uh, and identify outliers, well, you're continuing to do the work every time you refresh a report. So wouldn't it be smarter to just say, hey, I'm gonna first determine what my outliers are and then use the data set that has the outliers and plot that on the visualization. Okay, so think about how you could get to speed and how you could really fast uh, and, and effective uh, build out uh, some of those reports, <clears throat> okay? So, uh, Power BI Desktop, okay? Uh, actually, I was uh, uh, talking to my uh, cousin back in Belgium. She had, a, she had some work she had to do for school. And she goes like, well, I wanna do this thing and I wanna do this in PowerPoint but I'm not sure if it's right. And I said, you, why are you not doing this in Power BI? Okay, I know it's kind of scary. That's the level of conversations you have with your family. But uh, I, I said, why are you not doing this in Power BI? And I uh, basically, I got on the phone, set up a Skype meeting with her and said, hey, uh, let me show you this. Okay, because she had this data and what she was doing is she had this data in Excel and she created some graphs and she was copy pasting that over the PowerPoint and things like that because she needed to do the presentation for school. I said, hold on a second. I said, how about you use Power BI? I mean, you're free to use whatever you want, right? So she downloaded Power BI desktop tool, connected to the data sources, started visualizing and did her presentation in school just using a dashboard, no slides, okay? because that's probably more exciting than what I'm doing now, right? Clicking through a bunch of slides. To, like see the real thing is probably uh, a little bit nicer there. So we're gonna look on uh, how we do that, okay? So the great thing about Power BI as well is that from a data exploration perspective, that's where we are much more complete than any other uh, of the data visualization tools out there. I know some of them are trying to like catch up and say like, oh, are we gonna do uh, data wrangling and uh, being able to mesh up data? Uh, so what we actually did is we introduced uh, in uh, well, V1 of Power BI a capability that was called Power Query, and Power Query was an add-on to Excel. Uh, in Excel 2016, Power Query is actually the way you're gonna be ingesting data, manipulating data in Excel, 
And so that's the key engine that you're using within Power BI to bring in data and making changes to the data. Because if there's one thing that we know about data, it's what? It's not accurate, right? We're missing data points. Data points are incorrect, incomplete, they're not typed correctly. So we want to clean that up or maybe just shape the data into the form that we want. Uh, and that's what exactly what we're going to be doing uh, using uh, the Power BI desktop. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> data sources, okay? I can list you an entire set of data sources that I could use uh, directly um, on each of the platforms out there. Uh, keep in mind that this list might just change every week to week. Uh, my daily newspaper is the Power BI blog. Okay, I read them what's happening there because somebody probably made a visualization out of it to begin with. Uh, but there's a lot of things that happen in terms of connectivity, uh, a lot of things that just happen in terms of uh, Power BI content packs or Power BI uh, templates that we release there. Okay, We can basically connect to any data source that you can potentially can. Now we also know that data doesn't necessarily sit together. So what are you gonna do with your data? You want to combine, okay? I have customer information sitting in a CRM system and I have web click analytics coming from my web database. The web database has a customer ID. My CRM has a customer ID. What I'm going to do is bring those together in Power BI, match those up, and then bring that into a single visualization, okay? And that's what you do when you ingest and uh, bring data uh, together, <clears throat> okay? So, a uh, couple of ways to do that. I can import the data into a Power BI desktop file, bring that data in, publish it, and then define a the, uh, refresh schedule on that data, or I can use a direct query method. If I use the direct query method as a question that would ask before, I can do a direct query to SQL Server, Azure SQL Database, SQL Data Warehouse, uh, SAP HANA, Oracle, Teradata, you name it, okay? You just need to make sure you have connectivity from Power BI to that on-premises data source so we can do that uh, using a uh, data gateway uh, and actually bring the data in that way, okay? Well, they're not bringing it in, you're doing a direct query. However, you probably want to import in the majority of the cases import the data into your Power BI desktop file and then define how you want to refresh uh, or how you want to combine data together, okay? I'm also gonna show you and talk about some of the best practices. Uh, some people think that it's wise that I have two different data sources that I'm going to merge those together into a single flat table. You can, it's easy. All the data sits in a single table because that's how you're gonna be creating your charts out of it, okay? From a performance perspective, it actually might be better if you just combine those together uh, uh, in, 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 in a couple of scenarios, but the reality is it depends. That's the best consultant answer, right? And what it depends on is how frequently you're going to refresh and how frequently are you going to refresh your largest data set, okay? If you have a data set that has two million records on one side and five records on the other side, and you decide to merge those together into a single flat table, when you merge those together into a single flat table and you refresh the data, it's gonna merge those together on those two million records and those five records, okay? Wouldn't it be wiser to just relate the data and do the lookup just like a join within a database, okay? What goes faster? Merging two tables together and then run the result set or define kind of like a view on top of it and bring it together, make, make, make that decision, okay? So uh, we talked about preparing the data. Uh, I could go into the data model, we'll have a look at that. Uh, then we're gonna be exploring, drag and dropping, making some calculations define the report, share and collaborate, publish it out, and consume it, okay? And then we're gonna talk about enterprise reporting as well. Now, let's get to uh, a demo. I'm gonna switch over here in just a second. I wanna make sure I have capability to zoom in for you as needed, okay? Oh, and you do realize that you can actually win a surface when you complete the eval, right? 
Did somebody tell you you can also win a, a trip to New York if you stick around for the session? Huh? Because I'm going to take you on a trip to New York. Okay. So let's uh, switch over here and <clears throat> get on a trip to New York. Okay. So first things first, I'm going to start. Well, first of all, let me close my mailbox. Okay because you don't want to see any emails coming in with a recording that might be asking me, Dandy, what are you? Uh, let's see. I'm going to start uh, Power BI Desktop. Okay. So Power BI Desktop is going to start, and what I get when I start Power BI Desktop is I get this uh, wizard that's going to uh, show me. I thought I had Zoomit installed. Just show me and walk me through a couple of steps. Okay, let's see. There we go. That's better. Okay. So I get this Power BI desktop, and what I'm going to click on is I'm going to click on Get Data, right? Because we want to start and get data from somewhere. Okay. So we'll click on Get Data, and we'll have a look on where we can get data from. Okay. We can get data from Excel, CSV files, XML, text, JSON, SharePoint folder, or we can get from folders. Now, huh, here's the interesting thing. <clears throat> How or what are you going to do if you have an entire set of CSV files and you want to bring those in and build a visualization and a report out of it? Okay, that's been a pain in the past, hasn't it? So what people would do is was like say, hey, you know what, let's uh, use SQL Server Integration Services, pull that data into a database, and then report off the database. Okay? Well, the great thing is I don't have to. I can actually say, hey, get this from folder, grab every file in the folder, and if that file has a similar structure, just report it all back at once. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> file report from database, you can take any kind of database okay, and say this is what my source data sits on. Okay. Other things include <clears throat> Microsoft Azure SQL Database, Data Warehouse, HD Insight, Blob Storage, uh, HD Insight Spark, <clears throat> DocumentDB, or Data Lake Store. Okay. Uh, interestingly enough, there's an entire set of online services that you could put uh, data in from. So how about we pull in data from my Facebook page and I show you what I post on there and things like that. Okay. Ah, probably not a good idea. Okay. Probably not a good idea. I might not be able to not be allowed to leave the country or something, right? Uh, but look at this, right? If you have any of those data sources, okay? Oh, I mean, um, there's quite a, quite a few uh, a set of customers that are using Plan View, okay? They want to get data from Plan View. Well, I can actually go to Plan View and retrieve data directly from Plan View. Okay. If I have Salesforce, I can actually go to Salesforce objects and retrieve data from there. Now, some people are probably having a website and they're using Google Analytics, Adobe Analytics, and so on to get their web click data and their analytics out of it. I can connect to that as a data source and just bring that in. Okay. Um, what else I can do is I can actually say others. Okay, and when I say other, I can do a couple of things. I could go to Hadoop file system, I could go to data feeds, go to SharePoint lists, go to Active Directory and map out my entire organizational structure. <clears throat> Microsoft Exchange and report on who's been sending me all these emails while my out of office is on. Um, or I can actually go to web. And going to web is a really cool, powerful feature because there's a couple of ways I can do that. I can actually go to a web page and we will identify whether that web page has a set of tables and you can bring in those tables. Or I can do, as I said, what I was going to do, 
take you on a trip and call an API that's going to get me some data back. Okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to go on a trip to New York. Okay. So before we go there, I need some tour guides. Uh, who's been to New York before? Okay. So I did see some hands over there. I'm going to focus on you guys. What's the first thing you notice when you get to New York? The Chrysler building. Okay. What else you notice there? What about the people there? And well, keep in mind it's recorded, so we have to be polite. Uh, uh huh. Isn't it overwhelming? I mean, I come from a small town. It's a city, but um, uh, out of Belgium, and we got 60,000 people living there. Okay. That's less people living in my hometown than there's people working on Microsoft campus. Okay. So my first time to New York, I did not like it because it was overwhelming. There was a lot of people there, and it was loud. Okay. Loud. Now, people complain, right? Okay. I mean, there's always something to complain about. You come to beautiful Auckland, and what do you complain about? The weather, because it's exactly the same as Seattle. So, right, did I, why did I get from Seattle to Auckland to get the same weather? And if I look up in the sky, I get the same view as what I get in the Space Needle. No. <clears throat> so, uh, let's find out what people complain about in New York, because if you want to go to New York and we want to have that nice experience that you had, we want to know where to go or what to look for based on our desires and preferences, right? Now, <clears throat> this really goes into uh, government openness of data. So I'm going to be getting data from <clears throat> City of New York, and the data that I'm going to be retrieving is 311 call data. Okay. Who's familiar with 311? Okay. Who's familiar with 911? Ah, what is 911 for? Emergencies, right? 311 is for non emergencies. Okay? You call 311 when your neighbors are too loud. You call 911 when they were too loud and you took care of it. <laughs> okay? <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> or the neighbors call and complain and said, like, hey, this guy is complaining that I'm too loud. That happens as well. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go to New York. And so I did a call to an API, and the API itself is going to return a JSON document. Now, what I want to do is I actually want to convert that JSON document to table. So I'm going to right-click here and say convert this to a table. Okay, and what I get when I expand this is a sample of the columns available in that data set. Okay, interesting. We're going on a trip to New York. Yay. So, uh, wow, that's interesting. Borrow, city, complaint type, when it was created, the actual description. So a couple of things that we're going to look for. Now, what are you going to look for? Only the data that you're actually interested in bringing in. Right? You're not going to pull in data that you don't need because you want to reduce the data set you're going to be retrieving. So I'm going to bring in, and I'll zoom in on that in a second, I want to bring in the borrow, the city, the complaint type, when it was created, the descriptor. Uh, I can bring in a whole bunch of things here. Okay, The unique key. Okay, And we're bringing this in. <clears throat> okay? I'm bringing in data. Okay, Queens, Glen Oaks, somebody complained about a street condition, there's a pothole, uh, somebody complained about a loud party. If you like the party, you could use this data set to go figure out where are the most loud parties in New York. Right? So, but my data is probably not in the shape the way I like it. What I see, for example, on this one, noise is in multiple categories. Okay? I see noise as noise residential, noise street, noise vehicle. Uh, well, you know what? 
maybe I want to split that up into a primary category and a secondary category. Okay? So what I can do is I can actually say, hey, you know what? I want to uh, transform this or actually uh, take this Uh, do a couple of things here. Hold on. And I want to split this by column. Okay? I want to split this column by a certain delimiter. Okay? So let's do this. Somebody is calling 311 there. Uh, I'm going to uh, split this column by delimiter, and I say my delimiter is custom, could be custom. I could just say split it by this, okay? And we're going to split it at the leftmost delimiter, okay? So we're splitting up this. Now I'm going to rename this and say, well, let's rename this to primary category, okay? <clears throat> and let's rename this to secondary. category. Okay? So, I see my primary categories, I see my secondary categories, I see the city, I see when it's created and so on. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> the creation date is actually interesting because what I want to do with this creation date, <clears throat> I want to right click on that and say from that creation date, well first of all, let's uh, change the type and put that into a date and time. Okay, so now I have a proper date time format. And then let's go and uh, create an uh, additional column where I'm just going to keep the date portion and the time portion. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say right here and say, like, hey, you know what? I want the date portion. And what I want is actually the date only. Okay. And I could right click here and say, uh, if I actually click here and say I want the time only. What else I can do is I can say I want the date only, but I only want the month, the week, the day of the week. Okay? I can actually say, give me the name of the day. Okay? Because eventually we just want to find out whether people complain more on Mondays than they do call and they complain on the weekend. Okay? Uh, so I'm actually going through my data set here. I call this 311. Okay, so that's my first data source. <clears throat> uh, I got my day of the week. What else I can do is I can actually say here, hey, I want to add an index column, and I'm going to make a custom index column. Say start that with one, increment by zero, because the only thing I actually want to do is have a easy way to count how many records I have in my data set. Okay? So, uh, we'll add this. I'm going to rename this one. And we're going to call this calls. Okay? So this is my data ingestion process. What happens is every time that I refresh this data, it will go to each of the steps that are actually listed there. Okay? Go to the source, convert it to a table, expand the columns, split them, change the type, rename, change the type, insert the date, insert the time, insert the day name. Okay? Uh, I often call this SSIS for beginners. Because now what's behind this, and why do I say for beginners, is because if you look, ah, and I shouldn't have clicked that, on my um, data source here, uh, I can actually go to view and say that I want to see the advanced editor. Okay. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> this is for uh, this is for the, the developers under us, right? So what actually happens is you're using M language, and you say from my source, I'm going to go and process each of these steps. You could just start writing this. And you can do some really advanced things with it because what you can do is you can actually say, I'm going to use a function on my data source, okay, and apply that to each record that comes in. 
I could say, hey, take this, do this lookup, take this, do this transformation, okay? And really use functions on that, do some really advanced uh, things. I'm not gonna cover that in that session. That'll be a session purely focused on Power Query capabilities, okay? That will be from zero to absolute data superhero, something like that, okay? So, I get this, I got this data, okay? Uh, we're done with the data, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna close this, okay? Do you want to apply the changes now? I said yes. So what's gonna happen at that point? It says, I'm gonna evaluate your query, apply the changes, okay? I have my data there, and that's the data set. If I now want to bring in another data set, I can do so and then define the relationship between them. I'll talk about that in uh, uh, a little bit later in the demo. Now this is my canvas. I'm gonna define a report. A Couple of things that you have to see here is I have page one. I can add multiple pages, basically multiple tabs to the report, okay? And I'm gonna start visualizing, okay? Uh, I, I call this my one-handed demo because I can just hold up one hand and drag and drop and just start visualizing, okay? And still get my exercise. My wife will be happy about that, okay? So I can do this. Keep my hand up and say, okay, give me a title here. Okay, the title needs to say calls. Okay, I can choose the foreground color. Let's make that black and the background, let's make that yellow. Okay, that's for the title. Okay, let's specify that we want that in the middle. Okay, I can look at the actual uh, data label, specify the amount of decimals specify how I want to display it and say none. Okay, I get 1,000 calls, well, I actually don't need. Up. <clears throat> so now I got my calls, okay? I'm, I'm, my arm is getting tired, sorry. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna resize this a bit, start positioning that, and what we're gonna do is we're actually going to bring in the borough. So the borough is the area of New York, Bronx, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Queens, Staten Island. I'm gonna drag and drop those number of calls and automatically I get a visualization, okay? Looks like I had 18 calls that were unspecified. We don't know where people call from, okay? But what I can do now is I can actually say, take this as a bar, right click here, say I want to sort this by the number of calls. Uh, again, go back to the formatting real quick and say that I want to see data labels on that, okay? So I got 319 calls, okay? Uh, from Brooklyn, and I got a couple of calls coming from Manhattan. Now, what else I want to see is I actually want to see the uh, uh, description of the call, okay? Well, hold on, I want to see the primary category, okay? What did people complain about, okay? Well, people complain about a couple of things, okay? So let's bring in the actual calls here. So drag and drop this call here, and I'll zoom in on that in just a bit. I'm just dragging and dropping, it's pretty, easy, okay? So what I can see is, sort this by primary category, okay? Sort by calls, sorry, okay? The majority of complaints that people call about is noise, okay? My data just validated what I said. My first impression, it's a loud city, okay? So, is that the same for every borough? Well, let's see. If I click on Queens, okay? Well, Queens has noise. Blocked driveways and illegal parking seems to be high too, okay? I, I, thought, I thought it was confusing. It's now illegal to block someone's driveway is what this is telling me, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is actually say, well, well, what about Manhattan, okay? Well, Manhattan, illegal parking, barely blocked driveways, very little, okay? Manhattan is obviously much louder than Staten Island because in Staten Island, you only get blocked driveways, okay? No noise, no rodents, no issues with the water system, no street conditions. Sounds like a good place to live, right? So, a <clears throat> couple of things that I can do here, okay? I have this visualization, 
Okay? And if you're using uh, uh, analysis services or you're using Power Pivot in Excel, you actually have to define your whole own uh, hierarchies. You don't have to do that with Power BI. It's all dynamic. So what I can do is I can actually say, hey, from this primary category, what else I want to see is I want to see the secondary category in the meet. Okay? So what that gives me is a little drill down. Okay? I can say like, hey, this is interesting. Okay? Staten Island has noise. What I can do is I can actually say, expand all one level in the hierarchy. Okay? I can go back up. I could click here and say, drill this down. Okay? So click on noise or do a drill down. Okay? Looks like the majority of noise is, ah, people just complain about noise, it's not filled in as a secondary category. Okay? Residential noise, uh, no, noise of what? Missing? Somebody called about missing noise. Okay? Interesting. Okay, so I'm bringing this in. I could use multiple tabs. I can make this all look really pretty and say that uh, I want to insert an image. So we're going to take some pictures, okay? Uh, <clears throat> let's take a picture. Let's do this, okay? Let's take a picture of myself. Oh, it's too big, okay? Yeah, that kind of makes sense. I'm not going to upload a large, giant file, okay? So I can just bring in pictures. I have to make sure they're not too big. This is a high-resolution picture, okay? So a good thing. It wouldn't look right in a demo that's recorded anyways, right? So let's do this again and say that I want to insert an image, okay? Got to take something smaller. Let's see what we got here, okay? Let's see if we can... Uh, take a background image. Okay, there we go, look at that image. Okay, now I got an image, I could start designing, make things look pretty. I said I was not gonna spend too much time on making things pretty, so let's move on from this. Now we're gonna publish that report. Now before we publish, okay, a couple of things I want to show you as well, is you can really define how filtering goes and so on, but you can actually also go to the properties and define page information, name the page, say whether you want to enable this page for natural language query, and actually give it a couple of hints on how you would like that page to be represented. Okay? What else you can do, and this is nice, is you can determine the page size and type. Okay? I can actually say, hey, this Power BI report here is I can, uh, let's just ignore this. Uh, I can actually just define the type and say I had a special page there, okay? One of the page sizes you have there is Cortana. Interesting. So if I have Windows 10, I can actually integrate my Power BI report with Cortana, ask a question to Cortana, and get my results set back in a Power BI visualization, okay? Now you name me any data platform or visualization tool that does that, okay? Nobody does, okay? So I built my report. What I can do now is, why does this keep coming up? I don't even have Skype open. So uh, what I can do now is I can actually go and say I want to publish this. I'm gonna publish that to Power BI. It asking me to save the changes. I'm gonna call this PBI demo Auckland, okay, hit save, get that going, okay. It's gonna ask me where do you want to publish to? Well, I have a Power BI service, so I do want to publish that to my workspace. So we're gonna hit select on that one. So once that this is published, it's going to tell me, hey, it's available, it's published. What do you want to do next? And I can actually click on the quick data insights to get insights from that, okay? I can say open this or get quick insights. Now the get quick insights is going to take me to Power BI, okay? 
and it's going to give me some insights into what I just uploaded. Things that I didn't have to do anything for, okay? It's just going to be there by default, okay? This might take a little, and actually it's gonna look into the model and get some insights and report them back to me, okay? So that's how easy it is to publish. Now while this opens, I'm actually going to open another Power BI and open up uh, Air Travel 2015. I travel quite a bit and I thought it would be useful to actually get a view on which are the best connections that I need to get when I travel from one city to the other and have a short connecting time. Okay, So I pulled in a data set that is public. Uh, it's going to give me some nicer visualizations and it's going to show you some of the things that we're actually doing here. Okay. So what I have here is a bubble chart with a play axis. I can actually see, show me the delays of airline by month. Okay, very nicely played. Okay, so this is uh, information of airline performance uh, US FAA data published in 2015. Okay, there's 5,890,000 uh, reported flights of which over a million are delayed. Okay, very few cancellations. Uh, for, the, for the people that get very literal, what is the difference between a delayed flight, an early flight, and an on-time flight? An on-time flight, in this case, is everything that arrived around the time it was supposed to arrive. Okay? If it's 10 minutes late, really? Okay? That's like the keynote, right? So, if it's uh, early, are you going to complain going early to Hawaii if you fly from New Zealand? You get that early? No one's going to complain about that, right? Okay. The delayed is what I'm interested in. Now, one of the things you would think is that you get more delayed flights in winter than you do get in summer. And actually, that's not what my trend is showing me, right? June and July have more delayed flights than December or January. Okay. So those delays, oh, there's delays because of weather. Hmm. Okay. It's just not a, it's, it's just an excuse not to get compensated for your delay. Now, what else I can do is I can actually look at the delay by carrier, okay, and actually go through this and look at the actual delay that I do get by airline, okay. Uh, I can look at the delay by route and say, hey, give me the delay from uh, departure city, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. So automatically it's going to tell me well, here are the airlines that fly there. If I want to fly from uh, North Carolina to Boston, okay, I can see which airlines flies there, what the average delay is, okay. I can see the on-time flights. Uh, well, pretty much on time. Yeah, that's on time. If I delete this, okay, I get a pretty good view. So what I see is that Thursday is not the best day to fly from North Carolina to Boston because more than likely I get delayed than any other day, okay? Now, custom visuals, okay? This is something that I was uh, talking to uh, an airline about is, uh, well, if you travel a lot, which seats do you prefer on a plane, okay? Sir, when you travel, which seat would you like? Exit row, okay? Exit row, window or aisle, nobody wants the middle seat, okay? If anyone wants the aisle seat, the wear and tear on that seat is going to be much higher than the wear and tear you get on the middle seat. Okay? Now the gentleman up here says, I want the exit row, but on every airplane, the exit rows actually have different seats. Okay? They have seat cushions that are not the same as anywhere else on the plane. Okay? So the wear and tear on that is much higher based on how much time people spend within those seats. So from a predictive maintenance perspective, that actually is key and it actually is uh, uh, great to look at, right? So I published this data set, okay? Uh, so that data set is actually coming up in my Power BI dashboard as well. And so I have a dashboard that I built and how do you build a dashboard? Well, a dashboard is actually a combination of multiple data sets or multiple reports. So I can actually say, hey, this report that I published, okay, 
I can load the data. You see that it actually lights up here and says PBI demo Auckland. So I have a report. A report consists of a data set. And on the data set, I actually go in and schedule when I would like to refresh that data set. Okay? So uh, once that I have this, I can say, hey, well, this component here, I would like to pin that to a dashboard. And this component, I would like to pin that to a dashboard. So basically what you're doing is you're building a dashboard that might look like this. Okay? So once that I have these dashboards, I can enable that dashboard for natural language query, and you actually do that on the data source, okay? And I can ask questions. So I can say, what is the average delay by carrier where the route is Atlanta to Seattle? Okay, what it will tell me is, well, the average delay by airline, Southwest Airlines, Alaska Airlines, or Delta. If you fly Southwest, you're gonna get the delay, if you fly Alaska or Delta, you're going to get there early. Okay? Well, I want to see that by weekday. Well, there you go. You can actually see it by weekday. Okay? So you get these visualizations coming in in natural language query, which is extremely performant, right? Okay. So once that I get this, I have my dashboard. Now I can say, hey, this dashboard here, I want to share that with somebody else. Okay? So what you can do is you can actually say, <clears throat> I want to share the dashboard with somebody within my organization, somebody external, whatsoever, okay? And they can use that, okay? You can actually also specify the access level, okay? And see who can actually have a view on that, okay? So I specified that two people can actually view my dashboard. They can view it, they cannot export it or whatsoever. Okay, so there's a certain set of restrictions you could set. <clears throat> now, one of the other things that I have here, and I showed that earlier, is the, uh, close this one, is a dashboard that's going to show me the Ignite New Zealand stream. Okay, so what I have here is a dashboard that I pulled together from a report, and that report itself is actually pulling data from Azure Stream Analytics, and I'll be talking about that in the uh, Cortana Intelligence session tomorrow morning. So basically, that's what I showed in a previous session. It's the Raspberry Pi that's connecting sensor and temperature data, and it's offloading that temperature data, pushing that in an event hub, passing that to Stream Analytics, and use Stream Analytics as an output to do a live dashboard. That's exactly what I say by Power BI does nothing better than any other tool in terms of live dashboards, okay? Uh, speaking of which, I think I can come back to this later. Somebody brought me coffee. Is there anyone else who wants coffee? Okay. It's already cold now, but my idea was if I put my temperature sensor by that coffee, my temperature should be going up, right? Okay. That's okay. We'll see if the temperature goes up here. Ah, uh, not really, okay? Anyone who wants a cold coffee, add some ice to it. Call it an iced coffee, right? Okay, so I have this dashboard, it's published, okay? I can do the Q&A portion. What else I can do now is I can actually go to this airline on time, okay? We could click on the properties. We could go to the settings. We could specify that I want to classify this data as uh, specify the business impact of it. Okay? I'm going to say this is low business impact. Okay? <clears throat> what else I can do is I could go back to those settings here um, <clears throat> and specify that I want to enable this dashboard for Q&A. Okay? I could go with the data set as well. And I can actually say, I want Cortana to access this data set. Okay? Ah, that's interesting. Because what I actually did in my Power BI report here is I created a visualization, okay, that is going to show me delay by carrier, okay? And my images are not showing up here. Uh, so what I can do is I can actually just... Uh, see this, and so what I can do now is I can actually get in here, 
Okay. Go to the settings of this, and I always click on this the wrong way. Okay. And say that I want to sign in. Okay. I could specify connected accounts and say that I want to connect. <coughs> Let's disconnect. Okay. I want to connect Cortana in Windows 10. with my Office 365. Okay, it's gonna ask me to sign in. Uh, and once that I'm signed in, okay, I can now say here, delay by carrier. Okay, and look at this, see, what happens? I just connected Cortana to uh, to uh, Power BI. Sorry, jet lag. Uh, <clears throat> and so what I can do now is I can say, "Hey, delay by carrier. Where route is Atlanta to Seattle?" It says I can address and source that from Power BI. Okay, so it's gonna load that, and I can see that coming up directly in Power BI. Okay, that is amazing. Okay, think about that. Somebody is asking you, you have a report that actually now does predictions, and you're doing predictive analytics. What you can actually say there is like, hey, what is my uh, projected sales for next month? Okay, and you could tie that back, and you get Cortana to answer that. Okay, I could have used voice. I could have said, hey, show me delay by carrier, where? Okay, and do exactly the same. Okay, so we published, we talked about live data sets, uh, the sharing and collaboration. Well, let's talk about Power BI Embedded real quick. Okay, I'm gonna go to my blog. I like sql.com. Okay. And I'm gonna show you uh, uh, bounce. Let's see. Hit a search. Okay. I've got a blog here on September 17. So I've lost a few pounds. It kept the Power BI for my tracking. Okay. Wrote a blog article around weight loss and workout and how you cannot continue to drink Belgian beers if you care about your health. And what, I, what you see here is actually I have this great Power BI dashboard that is embedded in my blog, okay? That is so easy to do. I can actually pop this out, interact with this, okay? So I'm now running this full screen. Okay, is that coming? Okay, it is rendering. So I can go through this okay, interact with it and look at my data. Okay, so very easy to do. Now I can say like, hey, I want to share this and put that out and put that on Twitter or send that on LinkedIn, okay, and just embed that. So I'm using a Power BI public service here to actually share that out and collaborate. If I want that to be more private, what I probably want to do that is use Power BI embedded and then use the security mechanisms around this, okay? So, questions? How many of you are going to go and explore some things with Power BI, not immediately after this session, but I would think pretty soon? Okay. Did you just see how easy it is to actually get started and get things going? Okay. It's so easy. Instead of going through an Excel workbook, every Excel workbook that I get with numbers in it, I basically go and say, hey, get data from Excel, tick, 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 drag and drop, and I get a visualization. So much more effective. Now, <clears throat> one last thing to show you before we wrap this up. Uh, I'm going to go to powerbi.com. And what I actually wanted to show you is something that I'm going to open here as well.
a great thing to actually work with is I can actually go to solutions and go to solution templates. <coughs> okay? So what we actually did is we built out a series and a set of solution templates, okay? a, a tool that connects to dynamic CRM, tool that connects to Salesforce or System Center Configuration Manager. If I click learn more on this one, in this campaign and brand management, I can actually watch a demo which is going to give me a video, or I can actually click view report. <coughs> and so this is Power BI embedded. I can view report directly in a browser and start interacting with data. Okay? So as I said in the previous session, what this actually does is just sentiment analysis based on Twitter feeds that you define. They kind of go like, oh, that's really cool. I can see the sentiment, I can see the retweets, uh, the total user tweets, and so on. If I want to install this myself and get started with this right away, okay, <clears throat> click install now, it's going to get me through uh, a Power BI solution template installer, and it's going to tell me what I need. <clears throat> you need to connect to Twitter, so you need Power BI desktop. You need to be able to have Power BI Pro if you want to share within your organization, it's going to put data into a SQL database, and it's going to give you a Power BI dashboard. <clears throat> so what I've done with this is uh, just downloaded this campaign and brand manager tool that comes out of it. I can see the outbound tweets that I'm monitoring. Okay, it's going to give me. Well, let's do a refresh of this. <clears throat> okay, it's going to go to all the data sources that I do have in my demo. Okay, and as you can see, it actually uses multiple queries. Okay, it's creating a connection, loading data to the model, and it's pulling my latest data in. Of course, what I would do is if I publish this on the dashboard, is actually set the data refresh so the data refresh kicks off from within the tool. Okay. So what I see now is trending outbound tweets. Have you been wanting Power BI reports dashboard on-premises hosting? Whoa, this is, in, this is interesting. Look at that, Power BI reports and dashboards on-premises hosting. We started working on it. And there's details on that. What if I want to publish Power BI reports directly into reporting services in SQL Server 2016? Okay, so really great data modeling. So well, there's some really cool information that you get out of that. What I think is the most impressive <clears throat> is I can look at the author's hashtag network graph, okay? Now look at this, Power BI, bunch of retweets that people have done. If I look at Guy in a Cube, uh, that's Adam Saxton, one of our uh, engineers that works on Power BI. <clears throat> I can actually see, well, hey, look at this. Looks like Adam Saxton has been blogging about Power BI, MSBI, Power BI, SQL Pass, SQL Summit, SQL Server Reporting Services, and I could see the tags and the hashtags that he used. Okay, so really impactful analysis because it also includes sentiment analysis, <clears throat> and it will actually tell me what the volume of tweets is, what the sentiment bucket is, okay, whether it's a positive or a negative or a neutral. If someone is just providing status, the sentiment bin is going to be zero. It's neutral. Okay. If someone is positive, okay, 0 0.4, I can say filter that. And look at this. This is so this is based on the hashtags that I monitor. Okay. Um, great use of Power BI in healthcare. Next week is going to be awesome. Okay. I get that at filtering and insights just right there from Twitter, uh, uh, just using the Power BI deployment tool. Okay, with that, I am available for additional questions. I know we're out of time for the last session of the day. Uh, I'll be around all week. I'll take your question. Uh, so the question is how Power BI supports our libraries? Um, I, I libraries? Your customized libraries being written in R. Yes. Okay. You can actually, uh, I could talk to you offline on that. What you can actually do is you can set up the R scripting 
engine and then pull in your own libraries and execute it that way. Uh, I will be around all week. I only have one session left tomorrow morning at 9. Uh, so you're going to see me around. If there's any questions any point in time, you want me to walk you through anything, I gladly do so. Thanks for your time and thanks for having me.